Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects, the place where I teach you all the tips and techniques for creating your very own animations and video effects. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the Star Wars Battlefront titles in After Effects. Now I make weekly tips and tricks videos just like this one, so if you're new here, maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out. Now before we get started, I recommend checking out our little Star Wars fan film, and I've linked to that in the description below. Now I've also added a slider at the bottom of this video, and you can use this if you want to skip ahead to a different part of the tutorial. Now all the files you need to follow along with this tutorial are also available to download for free via a link below. Now to complete this tutorial, you're actually going to need to download a free plugin called Saber from Video Copilot. And I've linked to that in the description below as well. And all you need to do is just basically go to their website and then just download it for either Windows or Apple and then just install it into your After Effects. And when you restart, it'll be ready to use. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is import those two files. Now you can download these files via a link below in the description, and then you can drag them straight into After Effects. Then I'm going to right click, create a new composition. I'm going to call mine title, and you can set yours to whatever you like, but I'm gonna set mine to HD 1080 25, and I'll set the duration to be about eight seconds and then hit okay. Next, I'm going to take my Star Wars text image here and just drag it straight in. Now I can actually start to resize this to whatever size works for you. Something around that works for me. Now at the moment, I've left this area blank in the middle so you can add whatever text you like. So what we're going to do next is add our text in. So I'm gonna right click, create new text. And here I'm just gonna type out my text and then roughly just reposition it where it needs to be in the middle of that title. Now with the actual font, you can use whatever font you actually want, but for me, I'm using Trojan Pro 3, which should already be pre-installed on your version of After Effects. Otherwise you can use any font and the effect will still work absolutely fine. Now what I've done here is actually just scale this up to stretch it out. And you can also scale this down slightly just so it fits nicely in the title. But this is where you're going to spend the time to reposition everything and you need to get it right now because it'll be difficult to change that after you've done it. So spend the time now and get that correct. So the next part is we actually need to create masks which go around the outside of these two layers. So I'm going to start with my text layer here by selecting it. Then I'm going to right click, come down to create, and then I want to create masks from text. And you can see straight away that's created masks which go around the outside of my text. Okay, now we need to draw a mask going around this Star Wars layer. But before we do this, we need to take that image. We're going to come up to layer and down to pre-compose. Now you can call this whatever you like, but also make sure the move all attributes is selected and then hit okay. So now we've got a finished composition with that layer in it. Now the reason we've actually done this is when we actually add the effect, we need to have the full width of the screen. Otherwise the glow will be affected by that size of that image. So it's always a good idea to pre-compose this first, before we move on. So with that layer selected, we need to create the masks going around the outside. So we do this by coming up to layer and down to auto trace. Now, if you're using the same image, you can use the same settings that I have on screen. Otherwise, if you're using your own image, you can just mess around with these settings until you get a good mask that runs around the outside. So once you're happy with that, just hit okay. And now we can turn off this bottom layer because we no longer need it. So we're just dealing with the two mask layers at the moment. So next, I'm just going to turn off this text layer and we're just going to start with this Star Wars layer here. And I'm going to come up to effect down to Video Copilot and add the Sabre plugin. Now, when I first do this, it's just going to appear as a solid beam. It's not actually going to be following the outline of our mask. Now, at the moment, it just appears as a straight beam and we actually want it to follow the mask that we've just created. So we come over here under the effects controls, we come down to customize core and we need to change this to be layer masks. Now, as soon as we do that, you can see it goes into a bit of a blur, but it is actually following the edge of the mask. It's just that the glow settings are quite high. So we need to bring those down. Now, if you want to make 
make it exactly like I've made in my demonstration, we're going to use one of the presets. And I can come up here and down to Arc Reactor. Now this is going to create that sort of electricity look, but keep in mind there's lots of presets you can use here. So you could go through and use any number of these to create the look that you're actually going for. But in this case, if you want to replicate exactly what I've got, we're going to use the Arc Reactor preset, and then we're going to go through and adjust all these settings. Now we're going to work down the list just to make it as easy as possible and I'll explain some of the features as we go along. So if you want to customize anything, you can do that as we move through. The first part is we want to actually choose the color. In this case, I'm quite happy with that blue, but feel free to change that color to whatever you like. Now the next thing we're going to do is actually bring this glow intensity up because I like how we can see this glow running around the outside and I really want to try and retain that. It's just that we want to reduce the glow in the center. And I'm also going to bring down the glow bias just to help cut through a bit of that glow. And then I'm going to adjust my actual core size. I'm going to bring this down to maybe around 1.2. I think looks pretty good. Now we'll come back and readjust these as we actually go. Okay, next we're going to leave the customized core section. We're going to come back to this. We're just gonna skip down here to the actual distortion. So I'm gonna start by coming down to the glow distortion and we're just gonna adjust a few of these glow distortion features. Now what this is actually affecting is you can see it looks like smoke running through the background here. And this is what these settings are actually going to affect. So we just wanna try and even out a few of those settings by adjusting a few things here. Now I'm going to leave all of these pretty much as they already are by their default, but I just wanna come down here and actually change the noise, the noise bias. And I'm going to change this to be 1.75. And what that's actually done is it's just changed the intensity to that glow distortion, which is running through the background. And then we're going to leave that one. And then we're going to come down to the core distortion and the core distortion settings are actually affecting the electricity, which is jumping around on the screen. So I can decrease this actual distortion amount to kind of get a more subtle electricity look, or I could even really drag this right up to get a really intense look. But what we're going to do is actually create a transition from the start to the finish. So I'm going to start by creating a keyframe here, and I'm going to drag this up to around 25, looks good. Then I'm going to move my cursor over to about three seconds, and I'm going to drag this right down to maybe around eight. What I might even do is even just drop that down more at the start to maybe about 15, and drop that down at the end as well. So we should have something that's looking like this. Now that's all we're going to do on that chord distortion. So I'm just going to minimize that and we're going to come down to the glow settings. Then I want to come over to about three seconds so we're lined up with that previous keyframe we just created. And I'm going to create a keyframe for the glow intensity multiplier. Now all this setting here is actually doing is just affecting the glow intensity which runs over the entire effect. So we actually want to bring this down because the glow is quite intense at the moment, maybe to about 45. And what I'm going to do is come back to about one and a half seconds here and drag this up to about 55. So we're just creating a soft transition, starting at a, a high glow intensity and then dropping this down. Now the reason for this is we're just trying to match that electricity as the intensity is dropping we want the glow to kind of match that effect. So that's what we're doing here. So now I'm just going to minimize that glow setting because we don't need that. And then I'm going to come down to my render settings. And the only thing I want to change here is just change this to be transparent. And that's made this composition ready to add in our background, which we'll do a bit later. So now we're actually ready to animate the effect coming on and off. So I'm gonna come back up to my customized core settings and this is where we actually want to start animating. So I'm gonna make sure I'm about three seconds here on the timeline and I'm going to create a keyframe for my end offset. So it's important you change the end offset and not the end size or end roundness. And then I'm going to come back to the start here and drag this all the way to zero. So now when we play through, you can see we have the animation playing out. And the last thing I want to do here is actually come down to the flicker settings and I'm just going to change this flicker setting to be about 50% 
and the flicker speed I'm going to drop down to about five. Now all that's affecting is actually the flicker intensity of how it's actually flickering in the light. So we've slowed that down and we've dragged that intensity up a little bit there. So at the moment this is what we should have. Now again if you don't want as much electricity or you're not happy with the overall look, you can just go back through and just readjust any of those settings that we've already done in the specific area you need to adjust. Now that we actually have our finished effect, the easy part here is just moving it to another layer. So I can turn on my text layer now and I'm going to come back to the start here and I'm going to take that effect and copy this and then I'm going to paste it onto my text layer and then we have that effect playing out on the second layer. Now the next part is I like to actually double this effect up and create more of a glow which is actually running as an offset over the top and it just makes this effect look a little bit better. So I'm going to turn off my Star Wars layer and just take my text layer here and I simply just want to come up to edit and down to duplicate. So we're just duplicating that same effect. Then I'm going to come up here and actually start messing around with a few of these settings. So I'm actually going to drag the intensity up to around 75. And then I'm also going to drag this glow bias all the way to zero because I don't want this layer to really have a glow running around the outside. Then I'm going to drag my core size up to about 1.5. And you can see what we're starting to do here. We're starting to create a more intense glow line which runs over the top. Then I'm going to select that layer, hit U on the keyboard to bring up the keyframes that we had already created. Then I'm going to select both those end offsets and just drag them across. I'm also going to bring in this start one slightly more and all that's doing is it's creating a delay in that effect. So the glow intensity layer is starting at a different time from the layer underneath. Then I'm going to come down here and actually click this little stopwatch to remove the distortion amount transition and set this to be five. So we're basically removing that distortion and then I'm also going to do the same thing under the glow settings, I'm going to remove the stopwatch for the glow intensity multiplier and set this to be 45. So you can see what we've done here is just created another line which has a higher glow intensity running over the top. Now all I need to do with this layer is again duplicate it for my other layer here. So I turn back on this other layer, I'm going to take that Star Wars layer and then duplicate it. I can delete that Sabre plugin on that layer. Make sure my cursor's back at the start. I'm going to come down here for that text layer, copy that, and then paste it onto that layer above. So all we're doing is just duplicating that effect till we end up with something like this. Now keep in mind, if you find the glow intensity too much, all you have to do is just come back to those layers and just mess around with these settings up the top. You can drop that core size down and drop that glow intensity to reduce that overall effect. And that's entirely up to you depending on the look that you're going for. Also keep in mind this will change depending on the resolution of the comp size that you've actually set. So you may have to make the core size larger or smaller depending on that resolution as well. But this will give you a good starting point to create those effects. Okay, so now we're actually ready to add in a background. So I'm going to right click and create a new solid and just drag this to the back. Then I'm going to select that layer, come up to effect, down to simulation, and just add the CC starburst. Then we can actually just adjust a few of these settings to create the star look in the background. So I'm going to scale the scatter up to about 200 and drop this size right down. So we get that look of stars. And the other important thing to do here is to change the speed to zero. So that's just going to stop those stars from actually animating. So you can mess around with that if you want more or less stars. And the other thing that I've included here is a little glow layer, which you can drag on top of the whole thing. And then you can set the mode of that layer to be screen. Now, if your modes is not there, just right click, come down to columns and make sure modes are selected. And that's how you create this effect. Now keep in mind, it's animating in at the moment, but if you wanted to animate the title out, all you have to do is just select one of those layers, come down to the Sabre plugin under the Customize Core, and simply create a keyframe for the start offset, and then one at the end, and drag this all the way to 100. 
and you can see that's going to animate out that effect. And all you have to do is just duplicate this for all the other layers, and that's how you create it. Now also one last tip, if you say want to change the title of your film, what you'd need to do is come back to your text layer, type out your new text, then create a new mask for that text layer, and then simply just copy and paste the effect onto that new layer so you don't have to reanimate everything all over again. So that's a simple tip if you need to go back and change the text. So there you go guys, that's how you create these Star Wars Battlefront titles. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. You can also check out more great After Effects tutorials over at flatpackeffects.com. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.